here's a person who I can tell you gets up every morning and thinks about how he's going to get these young people jobs here in Ohio. And uh, 
um, but look, for the first time I was in, nobody is a saint. Nobody's holier than thou, believe me. But I always kept my mother's advice in mind. Johnny, raise the bar. No one is more important than anybody else. And I consider the janitor to be as important as the CEO. In fact, my father was a security guy. I mean, I don't even know if he, he I know he didn't carry a gun. He sat at a desk at a community college. But every morning when the president of the, of the community college would walk in, my dad would smile and talk to him. And when my mother and father were killed back in 1987 by a drunk driver, he came, to the, he came to the funeral home and he looked at me and he said, your dad made every day I had better. And so I don't consider one to be any better than another. And you don't play in this business. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. I've had a wonderful life, an incredible life. And i got to tell you honestly, uh, the Lord, for whatever reason, has blessed me. When I got out for 10 years, and I thought, my friend said, you need to get back in. So I said to my wife, sweetie, all of my friends are telling me I need to go back in again. She says, well, honey, look, if you, and I said, it won't be that bad. I'll have to give up all of my privacy. We'll cut off, we'll cut off income. You will be a target along with everybody else. What do you think? She said, great. You just sleep outside for the next four years. <laughs> well, what she became convinced of, and I am convinced of, is the good Lord gives us talents. Everybody in this barn tonight has a special talent. And what the Lord expects is that we use it to make for a little bit of a better world. You know, I don't have a teleprompter, so this is not some well put together speech. I left it in the car, okay? <laughs> but I believe that. And I think at the end of our lives, we have, to, we have to answer for what we did with our talents. And I felt called to do this. And I was so lucky to be in a job where I could work at saving Ohio with my friends who had the same commitments. Now you folks, some of you have been going to dinners since Moby Dick has been a minnow, okay? <laughs> and you hear the rhetoric, and you hear the talk, and nothing ever happens. Well, you know, in Ohio, it is happening. And the reason it's happening is because we are all committed to doing one thing, restoring the greatness of our state. And I like to talk... got to get on the plane to go see your grandchildren and you say you go there and your, your, your daughter or your son picks you up at the airport and you're so happy to be there and you get to see the kids and it's fantastic and then it's time to leave before you know it and you get in the car to go to the airport and you say goodbye and you've got tears in your eyes and you say why are they not living here one third of our young people graduate from college and leave Ohio. You know, the reason I came to Ohio is because I believe it was the promised land. The reason why young people live, leave Ohio is because they think the promised land is somewhere else. And we can't afford to lose our young people. They're the, they're the, the very base of, of how we grow our state. So we looked at all this, all of my colleagues here and I, and we looked at it an $8 billion hole on top of the fact that we lost these 600,000 jobs, that we were $8 billion in the hole, and we said we got to fix it. And we cannot fix this by raising taxes. And the reason why we couldn't do that is... The reason we couldn't do that, folks, is it's not, you know, I'm philosophically against it. My party doesn't believe in it. That has nothing to do with it. It has to do with competitiveness. You see, if you have high costs and you want business, business will go where the low costs are. They're, they're not into charity work. Oh, they do charity work if they're successful and they're a good company. But they don't just go around locating where it's hard. It's hard to be a small business person. And I tell you, we love the small business people. I'll tell you why I love them. I love small business people because small business people, entrepreneurs, they fight for the basic things that made the country great. You see, they got hurt and they're to stand up. But I tell you, I've known some CEOs and 
I watched these CEOs, not all of them, but too many of them, they're worried about their little golden parachute. You know, they don't want to take a stand on anything. I tell them, you know, you're mad. Politicians don't want to take a stand in Washington. Why don't you take a stand? How can you criticize somebody else when you don't want to stand up? I don't find that with entrepreneurs. With entrepreneurs, they get America, they understand America, they understand free markets, they have no fear, and those entrepreneurs include our farmers, who every day work with their hands to help support this country. They don't have two congressmen now in Ohio because our population growth has been so anemic. Well, looking at Congress may not be so bad, but uh, no, we need to have them because of our voice to be heard, the Ohio voice. So folks, there were a couple ways we could deal with this. We're not raising taxes, we just go and cut. But contrary to what people may think about me, I'm not that big in the cutting. Because I'm a believer that you need to design a better product at a lower price that gives you customer satisfaction. <laughs> Let me give you an example. I remember when the uh, when the Kindle came out. I don't know if anybody in here had a Kindle in the early days, but I did. Okay, now they pay you money to have a Kindle <laughs> because they figured out how to drive a better product at a lower price. That's what government has to do. And when you're in the government, working in the government, running the government, treat the money that you get, the public money, like it's your own. And it makes it pretty easy. Yeah. So that's the right way, right? Yeah. It's not hard, but it's our money. It's your money for our money. So we started to make a couple changes, and I want to tell you just about a couple of them. For 30 years in this state, we wanted to have a system where if mom and dad qualified for a nursing home, that they would be able to stay in their own home where they would be healthier, happier, and more independent. For 30 years, for 30 years, we wanted that in the state. And for 30 years, we were denied. You know why? Lobbyists, special interest groups, the power of money in influencing legislators' decisions. Well, it took 30 years. But you know what? Today, if mom and dad qualify for a nursing home and they want to stay in their own home at one-fifth the cost, where they will be ha health healthier, happier, and more independent, you can do it in Ohio because the legislature stood up against the special interests and they got it done. Thank you, guys. For 134 years, and I'm a believer that every 100 years you ought to look at the laws, okay? Change them every 100 years. Just kidding. Uh, for 100, over 100 years, if you wanted to build a public building, you had to hire multiple prime contractors. Now, when you hire a prime contractor to do your lighting, your electricity, your heating, your drywall, you, you couldn't even afford the house. That's the way we've been running the public buildings. So when our universities had to build something, take a guess who was paying the price of all that. You were, okay? Well, Gordon Gee, President of Ohio State, came and helped us. The State Senate, the State House, one prime contractor on every building, and Gordon Gee says when he builds that billion dollar hospital up there at Ohio State, he will save 20 to 30 percent, it'll be translated in stopping this dramatic escalation of tuition. We, we did something that we ran over a hundred years ago, and we did it in six months. By the way, we have this $8 billion budget hole. We have a surplus today. We got rid of the budget. The budget is balanced. We have a little surplus, and we actually put some money in the rainy day fund, so that when the rainy day comes, we don't have to go on Denver Street with a tin cup begging people in Washington to bail us out with money that's our children's. We're controlling our own destiny. And here's the interesting thing: the S&P, Standard and Poor's, downgraded the United States of America. 
They improved our credit rating. Yeah. 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 substance abuse, loss of hope, children in poverty. My wife came down here to the Butler County Backpack Program. Do you know about that program? Yes. God bless those people. You know what they do? They found out, they found out that there are children who would go home and Saturday and Sunday wouldn't have anything to eat. And I don't know what they'd scrounge around for, but they get back to school on Monday we couldn't learn. So some smart people down here, Margie and my right, some smart people down here said, you know what? On Friday nights, why don't we stuff the kids' backpacks with food? And they don't want to just give them the food to carry out the door. We got a lot of proud people. So they stick it in the backpacks so the kids have something to eat all weekend long. And when they go to school on Monday, they're ready to learn and become something. That's a fantastic program. We've got to work to eliminate poverty among our children in this state. And the way we can do it is give people hope and give them a job. And Keith mentioned here these numbers. Now, these are not numbers, folks. This is a flesh and blood. You know, Keith mentioned let me go through it. 27,554 jobs saved. Let me tell you how that works. Um, up in Cleveland, in a place called American Greetings. You heard about that? Yeah, the greeting card. They were going to Illinois. I went up there three days after the election and met them. We sat down with them, worked with them for a couple of months. The state senate worked with us. The House did. They're building their new headquarters in Ohio. They're not moving. <laughs> right down here. They were thinking about going to Mexico, and they're not. They're staying here and adding jobs. We work directly with them to have that happen. Let me give you another one. Diebold, they're the ones that make the ATM machines. They're the ones that do the security for your home. They were, they were fixing and going to Georgia. You know, their competitor was NCR, and when NCR left Dayton, it blew a hole in the city down there, in the budget. Diebold is not only leaving, they're building their new New World Headquarters in Canton, Ohio. Those people are going to be working and they'll be adding workers up there. The same thing. And a couple months ago, there's a little company over in Kentucky called Omnicare. It's not so little, hundreds of employees. They provide prescription drugs to nursing homes. Guess what? We work with them. They have moved from Kentucky to Ohio. And here's the thing in Kentucky, I'm told it's not safe for me to go there now. They've got one of those ones out. They said the governor and the legislature is trying to steal all of our jobs. Not all of them, just most of them. As many as we can get to move to Ohio. You all remember, you all remember Dave, uh, Dave Thomas, Wendy's man. I met Dave in 1977. I went in to see him and said, Dave, Mr. Thomas, your mother never thought you could make as much money as you make making hamburgers. He says, I'll bet your mother doesn't think you can get elected to anything. <laughs> I said, we got something in common. <laughs> See, he helped me in my first election. That was in 1977. That's 23, that's 34 years ago. Uh, Wendy's moved to Georgia. The corporate red headquarters moved to Georgia. About two and a half months ago, working with the CEO of Wendy's, guess what? Wendy's is moving back to Columbus. Oh, yeah. so, folks, the sun is starting to come up in Ohio. People around the country are beginning to understand that we are a government 
that will repeal silly rules and regulations, that can answer the phone, that can get smart people out to deal with CEOs and small business people, they're understanding it. Our credit is improved, our budget is balanced, and by the way, along the way we also decided it wasn't good enough to just balance the budget. That's why we passed a bill that eliminates the death tax so nobody has to visit the undertaker with the part of the tax on the same day. Gone. Right, Gone. Yes, that's, that's not talk. We're not talking it's in the house. It's, it's done. It's signed in the law. And if you can invest a little money in a small business, We'll give you a 10% tax credit for investing in small business here in Ohio, and we're able to, to restore the income tax cut that was taken away from us whenever they ran out of money the last time. You know what? It's not talk. For all these years, you've been coming to this stuff and here and talk. This is action. Now, we talk about issue two and three, or issue two most particularly. In issue three, we do have a health care problem, but I don't want and frankly, I don't want them shoving something down our throat from the top to the bottom. We can drive America's health care reform from the bottom up. Working in our communities to get us Let's just for a second talk about this issue, too. You know, there's a lot of single moms out there, unfortunately, too many. Uh, tough situation. Trying to raise the kids trying to hold down a job. That single mom, you think she has a guaranteed pension? Are you kidding me? She may have a 401k, and maybe the employer matches the 401k, but in these times lately, the employer hasn't matched them. But she still squirrels whatever money she can away in the 401k. You know why she does it. She wants her kids to have a little better situation than she had. That's what every, every generation hopes for. I know i got 11-year-old twins, and I know I look awfully young to have those kids. <laughs> and I'm just fine. But every generation wants their kids to do better. And that's what she wants. And then when it comes to her health care, oh, huh, tough. Costs a lot of money. May not get all the coverage she wants. So I'm going to ask you a question. In a state where people, where the culture of our state is always that everybody pitches in to help out, why is it that we're making that woman pay not only for her own family and their health care and her own 401k, and she's being forced to pay for somebody else's that doesn't want to step up and pay for their insurance and their retirement? That has to stop. That's not fair. Someone has to stand up for that lady, for that woman. This business, by the way, of you could be teacher of the year, but if you're the last one hired, you're the first one fired. Could, where, how can you even dream something up like that? That has to go. We want to put the kids first in the schools. Now, let me also tell you, I mentioned American Greetings. They were in Brooklyn, Ohio. And Brooklyn, Ohio raised their taxes. And by the way, local governments in Ohio have raised taxes in the last decade by 42%. You think that's sustainable? It's not. And look, what we are offering with these tools to help local governments control their costs, which is 10% of your guaranteed pension and 15% of your health care, we're offering local governments the ability to be able to control their costs so we can create jobs. Do you understand? Do you understand that this is not something we did for ourselves? This is something all state employees are paying the 10 and the 15. It's the, it's the government employees at the local level who don't pay it, and it's those communities that have raised taxes 42% over the last decade. So folks, we have to control our costs because up in Brooklyn, Ohio, where they raised the income tax, American Greetings left, and they took the payroll and the taxes and everything else out of Brooklyn blowing a hole in the budgets of the schools and the cities. And that city, that community there, they went to Westlake, which is located up near Cleveland also. Westlake got a bounty, didn't they? They got the company, they got the workers, they got the revenue, and they got the growth. You see, 
From top to bottom, the state of Ohio can't be the only entity that controls its costs and thinks differently and is willing to take the heat and willing to stand up to special interest groups. We have to do it at the local level as well. Because when I go to meet with CEOs and try to recruit companies, they don't come into my office and they come in all the time and they don't say, hey, Governor, how can you drive up our costs? They come in and they say, how can you help us to reduce our costs so we can hire more people and be more successful in helping communities? That's why we have uphill fight. Sometimes it takes a long time to get people to understand that reform is necessary. But I'm going to tell you this, win or lose, we got to solve them both to one another. We are going to work to make sure that Ohio grows again, that our young people, that our grandchildren are raised here in the state of Ohio, that Ohio in the Midwest with the fantastic agriculture and maybe the God-given reserves in the eastern part of this state that allow us to develop natural gas and shale and the ability to use and the ability to use Wright Patterson Air Force Base to develop a whole other generation of vehicles. Or when we look at, at this area and we see the, the fact that people here know how to make things. You know, some of us were born to make things. I wasn't one of them, by the way, but there are a lot of people that are. We're going to bring manufacturing back to Ohio. Stop apologizing. Stop analyzing vocational education. That's ridiculous. And on the way over here, I went past and saw at Cincinnati Children's. You know how great a medical operation we have in Ohio with the Cleveland Clinic? Case Western Reserve, University Hospital, Ohio State, the University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati Children's, Columbus Children's, Human Performance Medicine and Dayton. We have a medical corridor that, that we, we work at it right. We can dominate America with what we have. You see? We are always again to claim, but it's our, our destiny. And I'll tell you real simply what it is. We're hard-working folks. We got common sense. A hard day's work for a hard day's pay, for a good day's pay. And you know what? People across the country understand the brand of Ohio. I don't even like to talk about our problems because even they can't imagine it. But we're on our way back. And we're going to keep plugging and we're going to win. We're going to use our size, our people, our natural resources, and our talents so that Ohio can not just be a beacon to other states. But Ohio can be an example, a role model, and a beacon to those folks in Washington and help them to get their act together to build a stronger America for ourselves, for our children.